Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Let's start off with Jojo Magoo's latest gaffes. I just did a video two days ago. <laughs> we had some epic ones, and now he's back again because he's going on a gaff binge. I married up. I was one of those guys that my whole life I've been surrounded by women who've taken care of me. Maybe they're smarter than I am. My younger sister used to be three years younger than me. Now she's 23 years younger. It was not okay, so why aren't they president? Now she's 23 years younger, right? My younger sister used to be three years younger than me. Now she's 23 years younger. There was not a single solitary Biden man that is as old, younger than any Biden woman. <laughs> that was, how is that possible, Joe Magoo? Right? What kind of what kind of Common Core math are you using, bro? And, uh, and and my wife, by the way, we're at a community college. My wife is teaching today. My wife is a full time college professor at a community college. He always says these things, you know, the whole I'm Jill's husband. Let me run the montage here. My name is Joe Biden. I'm Barack Obama's <laughs> vice president. And I'm Jill Biden's husband. My name is Joe Biden. I'm Jill Biden's husband. My name is Joe Biden. I'm Bill Biden's husband. You know, like a granddad joke. It's not even a dad joke. It's a granddad joke. And, well, let me show you this. He stole it, right? He plagiarized it from JFK, so it isn't even his original joke. I do not uh, think it altogether inappropriate to introduce myself to this audience. I am the man who accompanied... Jacqueline Kennedy uh, to Paris, and I've enjoyed it. I am Jill's husband. <laughs> Hello. As I said many times before, I'm Jill's husband. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Jill Biden's husband. <clears throat> My name's Joe Biden. Please sit down. I'm Jill's husband. And Naomi Biden's grandfather. My name is Joe Biden. I am Jill Biden's husband. But he always says things like this to try to make it sound like he's, you know, thinking that women are superior or whatever. And yet he's always their boss or he's always disrespecting them by doing things like this. So first he comes in, right? Now this is a, a stranger. He doesn't know this girl. He's coming in. Now if you're like a 70-year-old man or a 40-year-old man or a 30-year-old man or a 20-year-old man or this girl's age kid... You don't come up to a stranger and put your head and touch her hair, right? Look at how creepy this looks. <laughs> They're taking a picture and he gets right in there. Look at Tim. Now, very important. Then he's going to touch her shoulder here, right? Like, he doesn't know who this is. Doesn't have permission to do this. This was the whole Me Too thing. This was the whole liberal feminist thing. He's violating all that stuff. And the women don't say boo about it, right? I told my daughter and granddaughters, no serious guys in the 30. Okay. No <laughs> what? No serious. Let me go, please. Can I run? Run. Serious guys in the 30. I'll keep that in mind. At least. At least. <laughs> and so the secret service, I don't grab the president, but he can grab your, your daughter and fondle her and get all weird with her. So I got a whole thing about this. Creepy Joe Biden offers unsolicited, unsolicited dating advice to young girl. An awkward photo op, and here he is with the girl. Um, they're finally, I think, coming around to covering this, right? We saw this a moment ago. And then um, here he is getting huggy. Here he is getting sniffy. Here he is getting snoozly. I mean, <laughs> it's a long history of this stuff, right? This is just some of the recent highlights. But, of course, he does this with younger girls more often. Here he is, there he is, getting forehead to forehead, all these things, going in with the the yarmulke thing there, when I get in there, going with her, hands on the shoulders. So CNN and everybody else knew this about Jojo Magoo forever, that he was some gropey, handsy m and -er. 
Vice President Biden in the key primary state of New Hampshire today. Much of the country's future will depend on the policies we choose in the next two, four, six years. After recent travels to the early contest states of Iowa and South Carolina. But Biden's latest gaffes are stealing the spotlight away from speculation about his presidential aspirations. So CNN wanted Hillary Clinton, as did everybody else. They didn't want Jojo Magoo. So they did a hit piece on him, things that they don't dare to say now, they said in 2015, Biden's candidacy question among growing gaffes. For their trust. Like his strange hold on defense secretary. So again, this one, right? Secretary Ash Carter's wife, Stephanie, and this claim about Somali immigrants in his hometown. So they acknowledged that he was a snoozler, sniffler, groper. Town of Wilmington, Delaware. It's a large, mo very identifiable Somali community. There's an awful lot of driving cabs uh, and, uh, and are friends of mine, for real. I'm not, I'm not being solicitous. I'm being yeah, you are. serious. And it turns out factually incorrect. He's a liar. Only 15 Somalis live in the entire state, according to the Census Bureau. They used to fact check him on CNN. And Wilmington cab drivers told CNN they knew of no Somalis driving taxis. And on late night TV, Stop Biden has Joe become Biden a punchline. Ever heard of a second to second lady? The missteps are nothing new over the years. Of course, John, John Stewart, I've showed you that before. He called it the audacity of grope. A new video shows U.S. Vice President Joe Biden making, let's call it an odd move during a swearing in ceremony. It's CNN again. You can see the vice president awkwardly placing his hands on the, the shoulders of Stephanie Carter. She is the new defense secretary's wife. Biden left his hands on Stephanie Carter's shoulders for an estimated 28 seconds. <laughs> so both CNN and CNN's doubling down here and then John Stewart's making fun of him. Seated to act out the pottery scene from Ghost. <laughs> right in front of her trying to... But we've already seen... That remorse. The audacity of grope, right? So this was a known thing, a known entity. Everybody knew it. They used to make fun of him. Nobody cared. He was vice president. He was there to, you know, act like the Ed McMahon, the sidekick to Barack Obama, play the fool. And then no one thought he was going to run for president because everyone thought Hillary had it. And she did, but she didn't, right? And so he was a joke. He's been a career politician that everyone thinks of as a joke, liar, plagiarist, all these things. So then Jojo Magoo wanted to run for president, or they wanted him to run for president, because for whatever reason, they thought he was the only person that could beat Trump. And their other candidates were god-awful. I mean, not worse than him, but there was no rock star, there was no Barack Obama, there's no Bill Clinton. There was just um, Jojo Magoo, right? And so... He had a problem. Joe Biden's super creepy hair smelling skeeves out Trevor Noah. This was on April 2nd, 2019. The former vice president is putting out feelers to see where he stands. And apparently the answer is too close to women. Joe Biden on defense after a former Nevada state lawmaker said he made her feel uneasy during an interaction in 2014. Luce okay, so this was a staged event. Because they knew this was going to be a problem, right? They were running him as a woman-friendly candidate and Trump as a womanizing, a misogynistic, women-hating candidate, right? And they had the Trump thing from before, grab him by the you-know-what, right? And Trump had, you know, multiple divorces and cheating with a, um, with a porn star, all these things. And so... They needed a candidate that was really a woman, you know, but, you know, Hillary couldn't get the job done. And so they brought in Jojo Magoo and they're like, well, this guy's worse with women than Trump. And they knew this was going to come up because they all covered it before. All these news agencies and comedians made fun of Jojo Magoo for saying it before. Jojo Biden makes things worse by joking about his inappropriate behavior. Former Nevada politician says Joe Biden smelled her hair, kissed her head in 2014. Now, she was an operative that was going to forgive him because she was part of the political process, right? She got something for playing this role. 
Joe Biden's presidential campaign hasn't even officially begun, and people are trying to knock him out of the running. Mm. Former Nevada politician Lucy Flores. Okay, so we know this. He's never believed he's acted inappropriately, so he'll listen respectfully to Flores, but it was never his intention. Politicians, when they're, you know, doing this with you, and, you know, they are, and Joe is, Joe is a hands-on kind of guy. Yeah, he and, is. But no <laughs> one, I've to, never heard... Listen to Whoopi Goldberg defend Joe, Joe Magoo. ...heard anyone, and she says she felt violated, and I, I have to take her at her word, but it would have been nice right. if she had turned him and said, you know what, Jay? I Exactly, it's her fault. I don't really like this. Please don't do this. Or, not, Mr. Vice President, I'm not really comfortable with that. Something, because he's standing right there. Exactly. Why, why, why wait and say it out loud? It's her fault. No, oh, it's hard to say. In fact, she's the one who groped him. Say to somebody who's sniffing. No, no it's not. Hair. Somebody touches you well, inappropriately. But it wasn't. That's the point. I don't, That's I, what she said. Yes, That's what that. she's I, I didn't. Can we just I, say. She, so they go on to defend him here. They take turns defending him here. Published a blog Sunday defending Joe Biden yes. over a viral photo. Yes, yes. this because viral photo. People keep she misrepresenting She was this. nervous in this experience, and he kept his hand on my shoulders as a means of offering his support, and yeah. said, and she. Yeah, she loved it, right? <laughs> said to him thank you for letting him and do don't that. forget that they're also earlier in the day and it made her feel more they're comfortable. Also exactly she felt more comfortable friends Different let's not forget yeah. these that that picture joe biden knows them yeah right he was behind her whispering to so you have to stop characterizing yeah. stuff mischaracterizing it that's all so I'm for saying. her it but was a comfortable be, experience yeah. for the other woman it, it was not and for what about all the kids right you know so they carry water for him so then he had to apologize because he wanted to run for president. About a whole lot of issues, and I'll always be direct with you, but today I want to talk about gestures of support and encouragement that I've made to women and some men, and I've made them uncomfortable. And children. Comfortable. Little girls. And I always try to be, uh, in my career, I've always tried to make a human connection. That's my responsibility, I think. I shake hands, I hug people. I. I he snoozes them, he sniffs their hair, he bites their neck, he nibbles their ear, he gropes them. <laughs> well, that's what he does. Yeah, that's the kind of connections he makes. Grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. You can do this. And uh, whether they're women, men, young, old, it's, it's the way I've always been. It's the way I've tried to show I care about them and I'm listening. And over the years, knowing what I've been through, the things that I've faced, I've found that scores, if not hundreds of people have come up to me and reached out for solace and comfort. Yeah, that's to explain. You know, it's the long list of little girls when he was doing the swearing-in ceremony where it's a big day for the family. You know, I'll show some of the, the pictures when I go to the voiceover. I got a little bit of, you know, some of them. But I've covered this before. There's so many of them. But he's just glomming on all these kids. There's one kid we'll get to in a moment that is... Um, you know, now a young woman saying he, you know, pinched her nipple, right? So we'll get to that. Um, but it's something that he's been creepy about forever. And they all knew it, right? And so they knew they had to deal with this before he announced his candidacy. So they get it out of the way. This is dealt with. Oh, we dealt with that before. You know, there's a woman who said something. He apologized. And now it's clear that it's clear that he was just, you know, he was trying to, he's just an old guy, a little bit out of touch, whatever it was, right? Something, something, anything that may help them get through the tragedy they're going through. And, and, uh, and, and so I, it's just, just who, who I am. A groper, snoozler, sniffler, snuffleupagus, sniffleupagus. <laughs> and I've never thought of politics as cold and antiseptic. I, I've always thought it about connecting with people. As I said, shaking hands, uh, hands on the shoulder, a hug, uh, encouragement. And, not Sticking your nose in somebody's hair, grabbing their, the front of their, their bosoms. It's just, you know, it's all. <laughs> now, and now it's all about taking selfies together. Uh, you know, social norms have begun to change. They've shifted. And the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. No, you don't. Because you just did it with another girl. I get it. I hear what they're saying. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. That's my responsibility. My responsibility, and I'll meet it. But I'll always believe governing, quite frankly, life for that matter, 
It's about connecting, about connecting with people. That will change, but I will be more mindful and respectful of people's personal space. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I've worked my whole life to empower women. I've worked my whole life to prevent abuse. I've written a- Yeah, he does. You know, he's just been doing it. It doesn't matter that he's a groper, sniffler, snoozler. He's, he's trying to pass some laws. <laughs> and so the idea that I can't adjust to the fact that personal space is important, more important than it's ever been, is... is it's it, now it's more important than ever. It's just not thinkable. I will. I will. So we had this guy, they were coming around with this Me Too was a big woman thing and the, the Trump was such a, so so bad on women for feminists. So they didn't want to run somebody this bad, but they had to. That's how they felt about it. For whatever reason, they needed this meat puppet, right? They needed this guy. And so they tried to do damage control. And the other thing was to keep him off the campaign trail and hide him away because of COVID. That was their strategy. Because he's a nightmare and everybody knew it. They all knew it ahead of time. They all made fun of him ahead of time. They reported on it. They joked about it. But then they needed this guy and they were sad. All right, everyone's got to change their tune about this guy and pretend he's great. <laughs> like that happened. So this girl posted on Twitter that she thought when she was this young little girl here and he was, you know, he did this with all these swearing in ceremonies senator's niece confirms joe biden fondled her nipple when she was eight years old even snopes said unproven it's her word against his the vice president is the is the president of this senate right and he has to be in charge of swearing in senators who are you know who are serving in the senate right um and so he took this opportunity. It's an uncomfortable situation for people. I mean, it was an exciting day for them. Grandkids, kids, like the whole family comes to Washington, D.C. It's a big day. And they're in this important, you know, whatever it is. Some of them coming from rural states, Idaho, something like that, right? Coming from, you know, small populated states and rural areas in some cases. And the whole family shows up. And Jojo Magoo takes advantage of this. Because no one wants to speak up and say, hey, this guy's a pedo and make a scene and wreck the swearing in of their grandfather, their grandmother or something like this. Right. Nobody wants to see, speak up. And so he would come in and he would get all handsy. Just say hello to Uncle Joe. What are you doing? What are you? What's your name? What do you know? I love your face. you want to buy Gets in, gets in with his face next. She's never done this before. You see here, he's going to stroke this girl's hair here. And you are. Puts his hand on her face and strokes her face and hair. He's just meeting this girl for the first time, right? This is something he's constantly doing. Here he's going to fondle this girl's chest here. All right, so here's this guy. Um, you know who he is. He's a Republican guy from Kentucky, Mitch McConnell, and his daughter, granddaughter here. So you can see he's got his hands on her shoulder. And again, this is a little girl. He doesn't know her. They don't know him, right? And even if he's a grandfather, it's creepy. He's got his, he's got his like firm grip of her, and he does this constantly. I'm just going to show you a few of these. And he's got his hands on her face. Strokes her hair, right? Why is he doing that? Then grabs her temples and kisses her head and puts his nose, sniffs her hair. Just off the charts, keep he's stroking her hair. Got his hands on her shoulders. And then you can see he starts, um, you know, his hands on her chest here, right? Inappropriate. Like, why is it like that? Why is he doing that? Like, he's moving it there. They got a close-up, the cameraman. He's, you know, this is an official event. He's supposed to be vice president. He's Groping all over this six or seven year old girl, right? And Jojo Magoo's gonna ask this girl come in front of him. Hey, you make me look better. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna grab her in and pull her in close to him. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. So it's gonna go in here. He's got a hold of her here. Thank you. He's gonna go in there, put his nose against her. He's in. Whispering in her ear. He's gonna go in for a kiss. 
right? She's like looking away, like she's leaning away. She's, like hard. she's leaning away, he's giggling, right? These guys are just watching it, her parents. She's like, you know, get off. All right, well, nice to see you. All right, he's going to fixate on this girl right here. Republican senator from Idaho. Okay, right here. This is his granddaughter. She's the official. <laughs> Can I have one with Jess alone? Very good. Oh. <laughs> he wants one with, he's always like, oh, you want to take a photo with my granddaughter alone? Oh, right. Like, how creepy is that? Strokes and strokes. Dad's going to stand pretty close. <laughs> Dad's going to stand pretty close because this is an obvious predator, an obvious creep. That's the only reason Dad has to stand close because he's untrustworthy. <laughs> he's a lovely child. <laughs> Oh, By the way, if I was young, I'd change parties. He says, if I was young, I would change parties with you. I would change parties for you. He would become a Republican for this girl if he was young. If he was 13, he would become a Republican because that would be the only appropriate age because she's like 13, 14 years old or whatever it is, right? I mean, he's just off the charts creepy. All right, so I've talked about this for years, ever since this came up. I want to give a brief recap because I'm not sure I was clear about it. So this guy, you know, was a known snoozler, groper, sniffer, inappropriate gaff magnet, a nightmare politician, right? Somebody who was just there to be a goof, to be a clown, right? He was Barack Obama's clown. The vice president has to make the president look good. And so nobody thought he was going to be president. He got caught plagiarizing and all these things. They all made fun of him. He was a joke. You know, by the news media, other politicians, and comedians. But then for some reason, they thought this guy could beat Trump. And the guy had everything that Trump had, all the negatives that they were trying to run against Trump, Trump being old, Joe Jim Magoo was older, and he was deteriorating mentally worse than Trump, right? The Democrats are the party of youth. They go after the youthful vote. He had a, a tour called the No Malarkey Tour, just a disaster. And then the groping and the stuff with the women, you know, he was worse than Trump on that. Everything they could criticize about Trump, Jojo Magoo was as bad or worse than Trump. And yet they picked this guy. <laughs> you know, why this guy? They could have guy, got a guy just as old, just as incompetent, but not groping young women and just being a disaster. You know, a candidate that didn't uh, have a crackhead son that married or banged a stripper, impregnated a stripper named Dallas from Texas, right? All these things. But they picked the guy. All the scandals, all the bad stuff, all the negatives, they picked him for whatever reason. He had one thing, and people knew who he was, and they associated him with Barack Obama. That was his one sort of, you know, positive go thing for him as a candidate. But they picked him anyway. It's just bizarre. Why would they pick him? And so once they picked him, they had to do damage control. So they took some young politician who wasn't going to really me to him. Because what he had done were all things that would be considered me too issues. You know, he was the ultimate me too guy during the me too firestorm. So they did damage control. They scrubbed all their own old or they, you know, they got rid of their old critical ways. They talked about this guy was, he was the greatest guy ever, right? And they excused him, they defended him, and they rolled out this event before he announced so it wouldn't be used against him. You know, his groping, sniffling, sniffling, all these things, right? But here's what I want to say that I haven't said before, I haven't talked about before. When you go to touch somebody, you have to understand why they want you to touch them, right? You might want to touch them for some reason. You want to show affection, whatever it is. You're making a sexual advance. But you have to understand why they want you, why would they want you to touch them, right? Like that becomes something you have to think about. 
especially now, but it should be always in general. Cause I'm somebody who like, I like to be, you know, away from people. I don't like crowds. I don't like, you know, people touching me, hugging me or whatever. Like it comes from, I think when I was a little kid and everyone, I was the youngest and, you know, all my older relatives would, would paw, you know, my, my aunts or whatever, you know, and I, you know, whatever, I just was always introverted and I'm sensitive to people like approaching me, getting in my body space, getting in my body area. So I'm aware of that. Right. And then there's the dialogue because he's often, and I didn't show you with them, but there's so many of these times he goes up to these girls and tells them, oh, you shouldn't date until you're 30 or whatever. He starts giving them dating advice or he says to their brothers, you got to protect the the kids. Uh, you got to protect your, your smoking hot sisters from boys. And he's always telling girls to watch out for men. And then he gets all, <laughs> you know, like, and then he shows the, what, what he's talking about, right? And, you know, it's so weird and creepy and cringe because it's not appropriate to have those kind of conversations. So if you're a younger person or you remember when you were a younger person, was it comfortable talking to your parents, friends or your grandparents, friends about sex? Right. Like when you're a little kid, they'll go, they'll say something like you married yet. Right. Do you got a girlfriend? And you're like six or seven. You're like, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Like those old people jokes. And it's real uncomfortable. And so Jojo Magoo is looking at these young women as sexual objects and beings. And, you know, as you get older, you do not want to have conversations. You shouldn't want to have conversations about sex with young people. Like, it's just really uncomfortable. In fact, pretty much all conversations with younger people when you're an older person are either going to sound like, an old person trying to be hip or cool. Like you're going to try to use their lingo and talk about stuff you don't know anything about. Right. And you're going to, you're going to, you know, they're going to laugh at you. You're like, uh, you're going to come off as old and out of touch. Or if it's something like this inappropriate and creepy. And so it's really hard to talk to younger generation. Now that I'm older, I'm aware of this. Like I, you know, it's just in general, it's uncomfortable. And you certainly don't want to go up to some stranger and of the opposite sex, I mean, if you're a man and go up to some young woman and start giving her dating advice, right? And start telling her, hey, yeah, let me, let's talk about <laughs> like how creepy men are and all these things. And you don't want to physically touch them because that's cringe. Like, it's just really uncomfortable. All you're going to come off as is a creep because you're an old, old person, you know, <laughs> and you're touching some young girl or whatever who doesn't want to be touched by you. You're just some smelly old guy. And the older you get, the creepier it gets. And you should feel weird. Like, you should feel, wow. Like, this is how... I mean, I'm not a good social person. My dad was narcissistic and clueless. And my brother and I used to joke and talk about it. And my family just wasn't very competent. And personally, I was always introverted. But we would say things, you know... I mean, you can hear some of the things I come up with here that are kind of mean or, you know, things that I say here that wouldn't be good saying them in, you know, around normal people, right? <laughs> like I can say it around you guys, but I say things here that would be concerning to other people, right? Or I'm uncomfortable, I'm not good socially, I'm not good at faking things, I'm not good at talking about the weather. And so when I realize that somebody is completely clueless socially, like Jojo Magoo, and going up to this girl and sniffing her hair and, you know, talking about, hey, don't date the guy till 30, giving her advice like that. It's just so cringe. And the fact that he does this, he thinks he's cool. I mean, I know he's senile now, but he's been doing this for years. And the media is complacent and the feminist movement, movement is complacent as this guy demonstrates everything that the feminist movement is supposed to be against some old white guy exerting his power and privilege because he's president, a successful politician, even though he just dropped a load in his depends, he thinks that these girls are digging him coming up and sniffing their hair and snoozling their necks and doing all the stuff that he does, right? It's just so freaking bizarre. And, you know, they <laughs> and they're still not covering it. The mainstream media is still pretending, you know, it's he's a nightmare for them. 
you know, for political political op- operatives, Democratic political operatives, they got to look at this guy all the time and go, oh, my God, will you just stop? You know, they have to do damage control for this guy all the time. Like weekend at freaking Bernie's with this guy, right? <laughs> it's like a corpse. They got to walk around like a mar- marionette and make sure he doesn't do, you know. Anyways, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely born from the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.